In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at giant metallic lattice structures. And giant metallic lattice structures are basically a structure, structures which are made by um, metals. And metals tend to form giant metallic lattice structures when they're in their solid form. And what I have here is a model of a giant metallic lattice structure. And the reason why I say model is this is... Um, this is simply a representation of what a giant metallic lattice structure could look like. And there's other ways of representing and interpreting it. Like you could see it as maybe um, neutral molecules with uh, neutral atoms, neutral metal atoms. But rather than having them as ions and delocalized electrons, you could see them as um, atoms which are not charged and except they're sharing but they they have um orbital overlaps and so they're sharing the electrons via orbitals but in this video i'm going to focus on this model which looks at it from the perspective of the metal ions being the, the basically from the perspective of the metals being in the ion ionic form so metal ions with the negatively charged electrons basically a sea of negatively charged delocalized electrons so this is what I have here. So I have the, um, I've labeled it down here. I've got the positively charged metal ions and I've got the negatively charged electrons. So I just wrote E minus the negatively charged electrons. And the way this keeps together is that each one of these metal metals, when they were in their original form, basically what happens is they donate, they donate one uh, electron. So basically the outer shell electrons of each of these metals are delocalized and sodium has if we look at this sodium is in group group one so it donates one electron per um, atom of sodium here and so as you can see we've got all of these sodium atoms and, and each one has donated one electron for the delocalized delocalization and what this means is that all of these electrons are being shared between the different atoms and so this electron can eventually this this is one of the delocalized electrons this this line it's just you know representation of the negative charge and so this can basically move it can find its way over to here or here or here or anywhere um outside maybe and when i say outside i don't mean outside of the lattice structure what i mean is uh this structure would basically continue out in all directions it, you, this is why we call it giant because it, it contains millions and millions and millions of atoms and so anyway looking back at this structure the force of attraction caused by this whole delocalized electron thing and the positively charged ions is a strong force and because this force is so strong um metals tend to have quite a high melting point and quite a high high boiling point and this is because these intermit inter well okay they're not intermolecular forces these are these are um these these are metallic bonds the metallic bonds caused by this so basically this structure caused caused by the delocalized electrons and the positive ions we call this metallic bonding which is a kind of strange kind of bonding because you don't actually see distinct bonds between any of these atoms but yeah so what happens is is these forces need to be overcome for it to boil or melt and that's very difficult to do so they have high melting points and boiling points usually and also the solubility of these these um of these atoms is is not a very it's not very soluble basically these metals are highly insoluble because of the fact that well these these bonds need to be overcome and they're not overcome easily now if we actually take a look at some other properties like um like it's malleability malleability is basically the ability to bend it so maybe we have a a rod of a metal rod and we want to make it into a bent metal rod metals have a character with characteristic in which we can actually bend them we can actually cause them to go from this to this or maybe just a curved curved structure like that and the reason for that is because if we look back at this structure these ions are not bonded distinctly to any any other ions as in 
it's not like this is bonded to this and this is bonded to this and it actually cannot shift around a tiny bit what happens is it's not bonded to any distinct um or any distinct other ions so it is it, it's sort of free the, the the ions are free to sort of slide over each other with a small amount of um leeway so they can they can slightly slide over each other which allows this bending to occur and as you can see this is something which doesn't happen in most substances i mean if you try to bend wood uh like a strong a strong piece of wood it probably just snap whereas metal has more of a bit more more leeway for bending rather than just snapping if we were to actually put alloys in this substance, so if we were to put alloys, as in if we were to put a mix of different ions into a sort of structure like this, so different kinds of metals, if we were to put different kinds of metals in here, what would happen is the, the structure would change. So what would happen is rather than we us just having sodium atoms which are all the same size and they're relatively easy to slide over each other, what we'd have is a structure which is quite difficult to slide over each other because we might have different sized ions. So we might have a big one and a small one. And, you know, this, is, this isn't going to be very easy to slide over each other. Maybe have a sad face because we can't. But there's some good side to it because we can actually use that to strengthen it. We can use that to strengthen it, but if we try and bend it, it's probably going to snap. Now, the fact that we have delocalized electrons means that these electrons are free to move around. And because they're free to move around, this most metals can conduct electricity. So if you were to maybe put a charge here, I mean, uh, an electrical um, connection here and here, the electrons would be able to drift between the two points and allow charge to flow through this material. And this is one of those properties of metals which which makes it um, very suitable for loads of different applications like um, electronics and uh, circuits. Yeah. So another one of the properties of, of metals is the fact that metals are also ductile. And this is relates to the property of malleability and duct, the fact that it's ductile means that we can we can make it into small uh wire like structures so rather than having it as a block like like this having it as a block of metal we can actually make it into a well let me just finish shading this in yay we can actually make it into a, a metal, I mean, a wire-like structure. So we can make it into, as you can see, we can make it into a wire which can bend and stuff. And this, this property we call ductility, it's, it's, made, it's, it's possible to make it into a, into a really small and yet bendable structure. And this makes it really suitable for use in wires. So obviously electrical wires tend to con contain metals most 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 of the time so yeah that's that's the property contributed to contributed to by the fact that metals are ductile and the reason why they're ductile again is because these can slide over each other and the, the bonds are not distinctly between specific uh ions in talking about conductivity i i covered the idea of electrical conductivity but one of the other things which these electrons can convey is kinetic energy and also it can, can be conveyed through these ions basically bouncing bouncing and jiggling basically and as they jiggle heat can be very e thermal energy or heat can be very easily uh, trans transferred from one one part of it to another because of that now let's take a closer look at the charge on these ions and the fact that we represent it in this model as being positively charged ions helps us a little bit to explain why the melting and boiling points can vary depending on the metal involved in this kind of giant um, metallic lattice structure. If we have, let's say, a one plus charge, what's gonna what the the thing which is gonna occur is that each of these metal ions, since this is from a group one, 
each of those metal ions are going to donate one electron. So one electron, one E minus per atom. Whereas if we actually had one from group two, because group two contains a lot of metals, we're going to have two electrons per atom. So clearly the group two ones are going to have a greater charge density, greater charge density. Not only are the ions going to be um, high, more highly charged, Remember, if you remember from ionic bonding, when we had ions with a greater charge, they formed stronger ionic bonds. And the principle is very similar in this case, using this, this model. And so the metallic bonding will be stronger with ions of greater charge because of the greater charge density. Because if we have one from group two, rather than there just being one electron donated, there's going to be two electrons donated. And if we go even further than that, like to something like aluminum, which is here, we're going to have three electrons donated, three E minus, three electrons donated per atom. So as you can imagine, from, from something like aluminum, we're going to have even an even higher boiling point, an even higher melting point, because of the fact that the charge density is even greater. And so yeah, I hope this video was helpful, and I tried to cover all the different areas of metallic bonding, and I'll see you guys in the next video.